Amy Fashion Tappings here with a little refashion. Now this shirt is, it's not thrifted, it's from my own closet, but it's pretty old and it's getting kind of thin and it's just kind of boring. So I've decided I'm either gonna make this into a really long shirt, adding a flannel to the bottom, or I'm gonna make it even more, uh, even longer and maybe make it into a dress. So first of all, I'm gonna kinda go a little on the longer side. I'm not sure if I'm gonna have enough fabric, but to make it uh, more of a sundress look. If not, at least I'll be able to, wear, if I can't get it long enough, I can wear it with leggings. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, now what I did is I did try the shirt on and you can slightly see a little chalk mark. And, you know, because I don't want to trust the mannequin because the mannequin doesn't have boobs. <laughs> I have boobs. So, um, I, I, if I trusted my mannequin, I might end up cutting underneath the mannequin's boobs. Then I'd be cutting right there because I'm going to add this shirt onto the bottom of this. And, um, you know, if I would have cut based on my mannequin, um, I would have cut way too high. And then when I would have tried it on, I would have cut right in the middle of my chest. And so when I put my the shirt on, this part of the shirt sticks out far enough that this line way down here is actually underneath my, <laughs> my boobs. So, and I was not gonna put that on video either. So um, I went ahead and did a chalk line. That is underneath my boobs. <laughs> so uh, that is where I'm gonna be cutting. And it looks terrible on here because it made it look like my boobs are really long. But no, actually, these mannequins are so flat chested. One thing you can do if you want to do it all on a mannequin is get one of your bras that you wear. Um, and, you know, if it's already form fitted and it can stand on its own, <laughs> you can put it on and have your shirt go over it. That will bring that part of the shirt up. Or you can just stuff it put a bunch of socks in there, whatever you need, so that it fills the bra, and then it'll give you more of a realistic look as to where your shirt is gonna lay on you when you're doing this project. So, you can do that if you want to. I was not gonna put a bra, one of my bras, <laughs> cause you know I'm cheap, I don't have really great looking bras. Um, I was not gonna put a bra on the mannequin, so. Okay, first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a snip right where my chalk line is to get me started. And my shirt actually has, uh, I can see the grain of the thread, so I can probably cut pretty straight, but I don't have my glasses on. I'm just gonna follow the grain of the, 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 grain of the fabric so that I can cut straight, and I'm gonna cut all the way around the shirt. So basically I'm just cutting the bottom half of the shirt off because I'm going to attach this shirt to this point right here. So let me go ahead and cut all the way around the shirt and then I'll be right back. Okay, so here is just the top of the shirt. So I cut off the bottom of the shirt. Now, I need to cut this one. So I, I'm gonna, there's only one pocket on this, but I'm thinking that I'm gonna actually wanna have the pocket down on the bottom like on my hip so just for the you know shits and giggles i'm going because you know i make this up as i go <laughs> so i'm going to remove the sleeves first because i'm not going to need the sleeves and the shirt is an extra men's extra large so it, i already know it's gonna be too big so i'm just cutting the sleeves off so that so that I have less bulk to work with. I don't have all that fabric around here. So you don't have to be nice and neat about it. Um, you know me, I'll hold on to the, the sleeves for something. I might need the sleeve fabric for, to do patches on some of my denim projects. Um, maybe I wanna add a different sleeve to a shirt. I don't know, but I'll save them. Okay, now that I have the sleeves cut off, I am going to decide how long I want it to be. Now, if this part of the shirt is wide enough to go around your hips, I mean, you can have a very long sundress because basically you can attach the top of the shirt like to right there. I guess it's out of the picture. Way up here so that you have your pocket down on your lower hip. And then this would be the top of your dress. 
and then this is the bottom of your dress. I'm assuming this is going to fit around my hips. I'm hoping it's going to fit around my hips. Otherwise, you'll be seeing it on a mannequin. <laughs> so, basically, I just want to give you guys a general idea of what you can do. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to cut straight across the chest, front and back. I'm just going to cut off the whole, this whole top part of the shirt from here on up. I'm cutting it all off because we're only going to use from here on down. So, and I, like I said, I can see my fabric line, so I don't need a ruler. So I'm just gonna cut straight across. Okay. So, I got rid of the top of the shirt. Okay, so I've got it all evenly cut all the way across the top. And it's so awkward right now because I have these huge armholes on the side. So there's the front. I have these huge armholes on the side, so it's kind of awkward right now. Um, but if you have a mannequin, it's going to be a lot easier. But I'm not going to do the mannequin just yet. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you how you're going to do it on yourself first. So I'm going to take it. It's inside right. And I'm going to turn it inside, inside out. So I'm looking at the wrong side of the fabric. That's the, so you can't see the buttons. It's the wrong side of the fabric. So I've got it turned on. I tur got it turned inside out. Now I'm going to put it on because we have these big giant armholes. And this is gonna set right underneath my bust. So what's important is, see I got a button line right here, and I got the button line of the shirt right here. I'm gonna pin the two together. This is gonna keep me working straight. So I'm gonna pin it to the shirt I'm currently wearing so that the button line of this shirt lined up lines up with the button line of that shirt. See, and it'll, and it'll hold it for me, <laughs> so it won't go anywhere. Okay, now, I just need to determine, because I'm right underneath my bust line, I pinned it right underneath my bust line, here's a bust line right here, and that's where the, the dress is gonna start. So, I'm gonna connect these armpits, or connect the side seams, and I'm working inside out. And I want it to be more fitted underneath the bust than I do down here on my hips. So, and this is just temporary. We're just pinning to get a start. If you're doing this on the mannequin, of course it'd be easy. You just put it on inside out and start pinning away. I'm just gonna pinch and pin. Ouch. Okay, do one side, one pin, and then do the other side and go back and forth from side to side. That's how you're going to keep it straight. Now, I want to make sure also when I'm pinching and pinning, I'm staying along my side seam because I don't want my side seam, I don't want it to come in the front of my shirt. So make sure when we're pinning, we're staying down our sides. Okay, so I've just determined how tight I want it. Making sure that I'm not pinned in, okay? So you would do this, pinch and pin, all the way down the way you want it to look. Making sure that your button line, see this is your button line, making sure this is staying straight the whole way. Now that's how you do it if you're wearing it. Oopsie, my pin came out already. That's, so if you don't have a mannequin, that's how you do it. You'd wear it and you'd pin right down the side. Now, I have a mannequin. So, I'm gonna do the same thing on the mannequin because a few of you said that you prefer it when I use my mannequin, so I kind of did it both ways. If you don't have a mannequin, do what I just did. Put it on yourself. It's easier when you have a friend. It'll help keep things straight or if you're working in a mirror. None of which I can do on the video, so I don't have friends here to do this with me and um, my mirror's in my bathroom. I won't be able to videotape in there. Inside out. I'm making sure my pin line, since I don't have this to follow on my shirt, I'm following my mannequin center. And so I'm going to make sure everything's straight. And I'm just going to pin it so it stays. Okay, so I just pinned it on so it'll stay. Okay, 
So pin it to your mannequin so it doesn't slide anywhere. Okay, and then we're going to pinch and pin all the way down and um, this is just a rough pinning. Um, I'm gonna, I'm also using safety pins, but um, it's a rough pinning because we're gonna go and we'll put a basting stitch in, uh, which is a temporary stitch. We'll put the temporary basting stitch in, we'll try it on, we'll see how it's gonna fit. So this is just to get us started. Okay, so this mannequin is smaller than I am, but I'm showing you how to use, you know, if you have a mannequin to put it on your mannequin. Um, so you're going to just pinch and pin, and, and you, if you look at any of my older videos, you know I do a lot of pinching and pinning. Just grab the back and the front of the, that keeps it straight down your side seam, the back and the front at the same time, pull it and pin it. And then you're pinching and you're going to pin. And that's what you're going to do all the way down. So you can flare, you can flare out, you know, and make it wider at the bottom if you want to, or you can go straight up and down. But the one thing, the reason that I say this is a rough pinning is when you get to the bottom of the hem, the bottom of the shirt, it's already hemmed. So we kind of want to make sure everything kind of lines up nice and neat. So you may start up here and then by the time you get the bottom, you know, the front and the back of the hem isn't going to meet up nice and neat. So you'll have to make some adjustments. So this is just, a, like I said, a rough pinning. So we can get a basing stitch in and then we can move things around from there. So just keep on pinching and pinning all the way down. I have it pinned to the mannequin, but I already did one side and now this is what I'm, I'm doing the other side. So pinch and pin all the way down so we have a new side seam and then let's go ahead and take it to the sewing machine. I just took a tailor's chalk real quick and nice and it doesn't have to be neat. I just wherever there's a pin wherever there's a pin I just run the chalk. It washes out doesn't have to be nice and neat. It's just so that I know where my pins are. See, so now if a pin falls out, I have a rough chalk line. Okay, now that I'm at my sewing machine, excuse the mess, <laughs> um, I'm going to actually start sewing from the bottom hem. See, here's the top of the shirt. So you can see the pocket through, it's inside out, but you can see here's the button line, here's where I cut. So I'm going to flip it upside down and I'm going to work from the bottom hem because remember I told you, so that's the bottom of the shirt. It's already hemmed for us. It's got a nice neat hem. Well, since we're making a new side seam, the front, bring this in here, the front of the shirt and the back of the shirt that when we make the new side seam, we want to make sure that it's nice and even because we don't want to sew it up and have it look like this, you know, like have it. We don't want to have it crooked. And then here's the back of your shirt, and here's the front of your shirt, and a big messy corner. So I'm making sure everything lines up. Top hem and bottom hem. And I'm gonna start sewing from there. Let me zoom in. Okay. So I'm going to be doing a basting stitch first. I always have, I always, when I put my, even my foot's up or down, doesn't matter. Because I always have my needle in the down position. So that nothing slides around. So the minute I put my, my fabric underneath my foot, I automatically put the, my needle in the down position. Hopefully I can zoom in enough, you can see. Okay, so I'm going to do a basing stitch all the way down, giving myself a new side seam. Okay, so you can see actually how much of the shirt I'm taking off. And then I gradually made it back to my bottom hem, which is nice and flat now. Front and back meet. So, just a basing stitch all the way down and now I'm gonna do the same thing to the other side okay you know I told you my uh, in previous videos that my dogs are always with me when I'm sewing look who's with me there's chance 
and then right there's Chloe. They are always with me when I'm sewing. I always have to be careful when I drop pins and I have to move around them. <laughs> you probably can't tell in the video, but I have to step over dogs when I'm moving from area to area. And, um, and Bella, the new puppy, is in her kennel. So I can't get anything done with her here. So she's in her kennel until I'm done. Um, okay, so I got the new side seams on each side. Got both side seams done. Now what you need to do is just try it on, make sure it fits. And uh, if it fits, let's go ahead and move on to the next step. So now I tried it on and it fits uh, the way I want it. So I'm gonna take this to the sewing machine and I'm gonna make this, uh, my basing stitch, I'm gonna make it permanent. I'm gonna stitch right over the top of it. Now some of you might wanna sew right next to it and then remove the basing stitch. Um, I don't find that necessary. I leave the basing stitch in. If it falls out, eventually it falls out. Um, but I'll have a permanent stitch on top of it. I just always done it, it's never bothered me. So if you're a fabric frays, then you can do a zigzag stitch right on top of your basing stitch. That'll help with fraying. Um, you can serge it if you want to use your serger. And um, if not, uh, if it doesn't fray, then you can do this, use a straight stitch. Now I'm going to do a straight stitch and then I will zigzag my edges when I'm done. And I'll show you what it looks like. So I'm going to go ahead and take this to the sewing machine. I'm going to do a straight stitch right on top of that basting stitch. And then I'm going to cut off the all this extra fabric, all this icky fabric, we don't need that. I'm gonna cut that off and this zigzag my edges. So, okay, I'll be right back. Okay, so I got my side seams done and I zigzagged them as well so that um, in case I get any fraying, there you go. So it's just a straight stitch and a zigzag and then I'll trim them up and I'm really running out of room to sew. <laughs> How's it going, Chance? Yes. He's so happy to be away from the puppy. <laughs> and the other one is like, oh, well, equal time. The other one's laying on the sleeves. Yeah, so they make it so easy to get sewing done. Okay, so now it's time to attach the top of the dress to the bottom of the dress. Okay, so I have my top inside right. And I'm going to take my bottom and turn it inside out. Because what I'm going to do is I'm going to want, I'll do it on the mannequin. I'm going to want to have um, the right sides touching each other. Okay, so this is inside right. And this is going to be inside out. And find my top part of it. And we're going to want to flip it upside down. So, and the reason we're flipping it upside down is I want, this is the cut edge. This is the edge that's going to be attached to this. So I'm flipping it upside down so I can have the two raw edges together. So I'm going to flip it upside down. Normally this would be a lot easier to do on the ground, but as you can see, my dogs don't let me do anything on the ground. And if I kick them out of the room, <laughs> they'll be clawing at the door or Chloe will let us know. So that sleeve out of there. So I'm going to pin all these rough edges together. Once again, I got to get the sleeve out of here so I don't actually get it caught in there. So just remember, you always want your right sides touching each other. So if you lay down the ground and do this or however you do it, just making sure your side seams Make sure the side seams of the, this shirt and the side seams of this shirt match up. So I did the center front. Now I'm pinning the side seams and pin the other side seam. You want your side seams, you want it to look seamless. You want it to look like one continuous line from the top, the, this brown shirt to the dark colored shirt. You want them to match up, so you want it to look seamless. So always pin them first. Okay. And then work our way around. You can kind of see I cut a little tiny notch. And I forgot to mention that earlier. I cut a little notch in both shirts so that I can I know what center back is. 
just so that when I'm pinning it together, everything matches. So. Okay, so center front, center back, and side seams first. Pin all four of those first. Then go around and pin everything in between. Right now, what I'm going to take to the sewing machine, and I'm just going to sew all the way around this rough edge. And I'm going to go ahead and, just like I did with my side seams, I'm going to do a straight stitch first, and then I'm going to go back and do a zigzag stitch, just for the added security. So let's go ahead and take it to the sewing machine. Okay, so I take, as you can see, it's just how I took off the mannequin. I'm going to slide it onto the arm of my sewing machine. And I always like to start at a side seam. Okay, needle down, hold in place. And, okay. So I'm gonna start at the side seam and I'm just gonna sew all the way around. First with a straight stitch, and then I'm going to go back and finish up with the zigzag. Let's fix my stitch or back stitch. Okay, so I sewed all the way around the edge. As you can see, and then zigzagged the raw edges right along there. So now it's time to flip it back the right way and voila! Let me go ahead and put it on the mannequin. Let's see how it's gonna look. I'll, I'll, I'll put it on and I'll take pictures, but just for now, I'm gonna show you how it looks on the mannequin. It turned out cute. Gotta have a necklace on or something. But yeah, I love how it turned out. Let me go ahead and do a close up. Okay, so there's the bottom. Needs to be ironed a little bit. You can see the pocket right, right there. There's the pocket. So it turned out, I think it turned out cute. Okay then, well, another refashion. I love the country look that this has. I just think it turned out cute and I love the placement of the pocket. That's gonna be right here on my hip. And so I wish I had two pockets on the shirt, but it doesn't. I love how it turned out. This is so cute. I'll take some pictures and post at the end. So there's another refashion. This is Amy with Fashion Toppings. Until next time, you have a great day.